Hello and welcome to Flash Animation, I should say Animation Flash, uh, Chapter 9, Lesson 1. Now, in this lesson, it is specifically about using scripting and to create items in your uh, Flash presentation. And it tells you to type a bunch of things. You don't necessarily understand why it's telling you to type it. You don't really understand the logic behind it. You type some words, Flash 911, uh, number 1 through 10. I've already done it, but I kind of want to explain you what's going on, what you can see, and what this creates. So the very first thing you'll note, I put all this together, and it creates something that looks like this. It's a green circle. However, what I've done is I've done this through scripting. So, uh, the very first thing I've done is this right here, this line is importing a library that's been created somewhere that allows you to use the shape and allows you to create a shape. For those of you that are aware of programming, and, and this is something that I'm trying to wrap my head around their scripting language. So, it declares a variable called my circle that is of type shape and it creates an instance called new shape, meaning that I haven't given it any values yet, but I'm creating an object in using their particular scripting language which is called shape or my circle. It's of type shape. So what happens then is I tell it, okay, uh, I want you to fill it with this color. So my circle, which is this variable that you've declared, of this particular object. So it's creating dot graphics is there. So dot graphics and dot begin fill allows it to fill with this particular color. Then what happens is it says dot graphics dot draw circle. So I'm, I'm guessing based off this there's probably a draw square, there's probably a draw triangle, things along those lines. And you give it the appropriate uh, values of the circle itself, which my guess would be position as well as radius and circumference and things along those lines. And then what it does, it says add child my circle, meaning that it goes out onto the uh, stage and it draws a circle this particular way. Understand that you're probably at our level probably not going to go in and start scripting around specifically with these flash elements. However, it's good for you to be aware of the fact that it is it is something that um, gives you the ability to kind of understand what's going on right here. And that continues with search circle object 2. Now, in Circle Object 2, what it does is it actually creates um, different circles. This right here is the position. This is the radius. So, once again, it starts with, I want and I'm in Circle Object 2, as it appears in Flash 9-12. I will go ahead and run it real quick so you can kind of see what it looks like. I've got two objects. Notice they're slightly different size because I've got one that has a radius. Oh, no, they're the exact same size. They both have the radius 40. One's at 50-50, which I would believe would be the XY coordinate of this. And one's at 250-250, which would be the XY coordinate of this. So as I look at it, the way it looks is I say, okay, I'm creating a new shape of type my circle. Then I change the color to this. Then I change the draw location to this, and then I add it to the board. So this is that first circle. Then I change the, then I declare a new shape, which should be here. Then I give it a fill color of that. Then I give it this draw circle here that tells it the location and the circumference. Now what I could do, excuse me, radius. Now what I could do is I could do that bad boy right there. And you will see a significant change. Additionally, I'm going to add in two numbers right here. Hopefully, that equates to a color. These are the same colors that you get from your uh, color portion, right? Uh, when you go to you click on your eyedropper and then you get your color, these are those numbers that appear to, uh, at the top. And they're in hexadecimal, if anybody cares to know. I believe they're in hexadecimal. So I'm going to go ahead and run it again. Okay, I didn't have a color change, 
So it's red, but you notice it's a lot bigger because I changed the radius to 140. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the position and change this to 300. So now if I run it, uh, control, test movie, and flash professional, boom. Now you notice I moved it down some. Now what I could do, I'm going to try to find the right uh, color here real quick or a color I can use so you can see a cha color change. Uh, so it's 009966. So let's try that. Zero zero nine nine six six zero zero nine nine six six. So I went over to my color swatch. I found a hexadecimal location or a number for my particular color swatch. Assuming that's in hexadecimal, let's go ahead and run this bad boy. Yeah, see, it's got a new color on it. So that allows me to actually import that particular color and draw the second circle. So that was essentially. Um, Flash 9-12, and what you notice each of them follow a pattern. I've got here allows me to use my shapes. This creates an instance of that new shape. This gives me the criteria of the color of the new shape. This gives me both the location and the radius of the new shape. Then I'm allowed to draw the shape, and that continues with both of those. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to give my circle tween. Okay, so now in my circle tween, which is on flash 9-14, I've got two different elements I'm adding. I'm importing my flash display shape, so this allows me the library that allows me to display it. This allows me for my transitions to include a tween. This allows me to include easing. You'll notice that I've declared it this particular way, but now what happens is, so there's my display shape, so that's there, but now I've included two more tool libraries that allow me to make modifications. One's a tween library, and one's the easing library. Now, it's telling you exactly what these are. If you were got if you got more heavily into scripting, you would go and look up how, what what items these are. You would add more elements to it. You would be more have more of awareness of how these interact. But in our particular case, we're basically doing what they're telling us to do as a um, as kind of an intro to the scripting language. Now you'll notice it's exactly the same as before. We create a new shape. Here's my new shape. There's my circle graphics that begin fill with this color. And then I've got my circle that starts at 250, 100, my x and y coordinates, radius 20. However, now there's a difference. I've added my child. I declare a variable called move circle, which is of type tween, right? So move circle is my variable. It's a data type tween. I create a new tween, right, that actually takes in the values my circle, Y, which is another criteria, I'm not really sure what the my, uh, what the Y means uh, in this particular case. If I looked at the method of of the constructor for tween, it's going to require my circle. So meaning it needs to know what object it's assigning to. I don't know what the yes means. Uh, there's an ease out. I want to say an ease out, uh, and then the location goes from. Zero, I would say zero, two fifty, and five, and then whatever the true is. But basically, what's going on, and I would have to look up what that tween that uh, tween function actually or method actually does, and all these criteria because each one of these elements in a criteria equate to some movement on the board, and I don't know or on the stage, and I don't know right off the top of my head all those elements. But you'll notice it drops. And it stops. So that's the movement between the beginning portion, which is this, and the ending portion, which is, I would say, 0 and 250. So there's my x coordinate, my y coordinate. All right. So that takes care of circle tween and kind of what this means. All right. Now let's look at the interactive part. And the interactive part is on oops 9-14 
Now the way the interactive part works is, here's our tween again, there is our easing, and it imports a mouse event, all right? which means that it is, has a script in there that's telling it how to react to a mouse events. So the button is changed in such a way, so I've added that play button, changed in such a way where it responds to a mouse event. So it says play button dot add event listener, meaning it's adding an event to that button, listening for a click. When the mouse event click, meaning it's clicked on, it wants to run the function called animate circle. Well, we just happen to have created animate circle right down here. Function animate circle event mouse event. Meaning that this animate circle function is tied to this particular event, which is a mouse click. So this tells us, hey, when you click on the button with the mouse, I want you to run animate circle. Then what animate circle does is it basically runs everything between point A and point B every time the mouse is clicked. You'll notice you have the beginning part of your function, you have the ending part of the function, and how it's actually created here. So what goes on is, as I look at this movie, Every time I hit this play button, it creates a circle up here that drops it down here. As I was saying, it creates a circle here that drops it down here. And then each time I push the play button, because I don't have any erase going on, it just creates it. There's a circle, drop, circle, drop. So I can actually make multiple circles with multiple clicks. So since the play button has no erase to it, I'm simply animating more circles. And you'll notice the way my um, function works is, there's my mouse click, create a circle. And so it create, runs this code each time I hit play. Boop, boop, boop. All right, that's a, a general rough introduction okay, to scripting. Um, we're not going to probably work a lot of time with scripting in and above um, working with our Flash Player itself. So that concludes Chapter 9, Lesson 1. If you have any questions, let me know. But it's, it's a lot more involved with what's going on there. And what you have to understand is vaguely what's happening in each instance of those particular lines of code, not necessarily your ability to sit down, I'm going to script all this and make all this happen, because a lot of it's actually built with your animations and your follow-on things. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in Lesson 2.